welcome to mana tv so this particular segment is insight with praveen puram so i just started this uh, segment to give a lot of information uh, across the different organizations what the good work they do in atlanta so you are the first pick of this particular first segment so welcome to insight with praveen puram so just wanted to introduce myself karen i'm praveen puram so basically i'm a Uh, IT professional, but as a passion, I am into media, and I represent the TV Five and Mana TV in Atlanta area. So, uh, first of all, again, welcome. Um, I would like to introduce uh, um, welcome to all the viewers, and I have Ashish Thakur and uh, Karen Horton on the show. Uh, this particular segment covers about the, um, the Atlanta Tech Village, and uh, also the ceo council which ashish also represents so karen is a vice president of the atlanta tech village america's fourth largest tech startup hub in just 7 years village uh, startups have raised to 1 billion and creating more than 7200 jobs that's really awesome in atlanta karen also serves as a venture partner with atlanta ventures and also invest in entrepreneurs through a startup studio that supports outstanding founders who are building companies from scratch and early stage investments for startup buildings karen enjoys leading workshop that empowers and connect women in technology with the goal of achieving parity in the tech industry she has been the recipient of the women in technology's women of the year award atlanta technology professionals impact award Berry College's Entrepreneur Spirit Award and has been recognized as one of the Salesforce 10 Small Business Women Who Inspire. That's great, Karen. And uh, Ashish Ashish Th- Narayan Thakur is a family man and he is a recovering banker. He had a failed startup, successful fundraiser, private company, and a non-profit board member. He is also a TED speaker and passionate connector. excel uh, par excellence he enjoys running basketball and reading currently he and his team at atlanta ceo council helps later stage company ceo connect to capital customer and talent finally he is not afraid of death but also he uh, he is afraid of heights so with that said uh, thank you so much karen and uh, ashish for your time today uh, let's let's start the show with uh, knowing more about atlanta um tech village karen why don't you brief our viewers to know more about atlanta um technology village what is its uh, evolution how it happened and what made you to do this sure atlanta tech village was founded at the end of 2012 and our founders david cummings and he at the time was running a startup called pardot which was the marketing automation firm and he and ended- it up uh it was acquired by exact target which has now been acquired by salesforce for 100 million dollars so it was one of the largest bootstrap saas acquisitions on record and he turned around and took um that profit and purchased the building which would become atlanta tech village so we exist to serve and support entrepreneurs and we do that by providing being yes physical space but also mentors and advisors and access to talent and investors and most of all just collaboration and proximity with some of the best entrepreneurs in the southeast so we definitely believe that we are the best place to grow and build a startup and we've been around now for almost 8 years and uh, i know you read all the stats in the beginning so um our startups have been incredibly successful it's been a, a very crazy ride and i love the job that i get to do thank you that's a awesome thought from david cummings it's creating jobs creating a uh, entrepreneur is uh, really needed for the business and yeah uh, if you're a brad feld fan or looking at any building any startup ecosystems i know brad actually just came out with a new book uh that i have ordered and not read yet uh but a lot of the kind of premise is that in order to build a really strong ecosystem you need to be led by entrepreneurs so you need all those strategic partners like we need our universities and our 
government and our Fortune 500 and Fortune 1000 and all these really important players. Uh, but the hope is that our success will be greater if we are led by entrepreneurs themselves. So I think Atlanta has seen a huge uh, kind of acceleration of that, of more entrepreneurs having greater success and turning around and putting it back into their own communities, which is so important. Okay, yeah, Karen is, is exactly right. It's the leaders and feeders uh, strategy where the startup communities are built by the leaders who are the entrepreneurs. And the feeders would be government, universities, corporations, service providers. And that's how you build it from the ground up. So, yeah. Awesome. On. Awesome. Awesome, Karen and Ashish. Ashish, tell me more about uh, yourself. How do, how do you engage or integrate with ATV? What's your involvement? Sure. First, it's very hard to follow Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I've known Karen for about three or four years now and, and look at her as a colleague and as a mentor. Um, she is very inspiring and uh, everything she does uh, as a leader in the tech village and her team uh, is an excellent, um, is excellent fuel for the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia, uh, which will be a good segue into the, into the program and how we, how we sort of um, overlap and merge. So at the CEO Council, we help later state CEOs connect to capital, customers, talent, and each other. And we do that through events. We call it sort of transactions by relationships or through relationships. And Karen had reached out looking for mentors for the Started Up Georgia program. And of course, it's very hard to say no to Karen. And once uh, um, I agreed and learned more about the program, we helped recruit more mentors from our CEO council group. And I think we're in week two. Let's go to Karen more to know more about what are the events, what are the happenings at Atlanta uh, ATV. So Karen, uh, tell me as an individual or as a business or as an entrepreneur, how do we connect to ATV? What are the what are the different ways we can connect? Either it might be a feeder or the recipient. How do, you, how do we get involved with ATV? Sure. Uh, first, thanks, Ashish. Those are really kind words. And we'll, we'll get into how incredibly helpful and inspiring he has been to us and me as well. Uh, but to answer your question, um, we want to connect with everybody in Atlanta Tech Village. It's that the leaders and feeders again so we have service providers where we have great relationships with our government the metro atlanta chamber fortune 500 fortune 1000 companies so everybody is really important but if you're an entrepreneur and you want to be a part of our community the first thing to know is that we have lots of events going on yes even with covid they're all virtual uh, but we're still hosting uh, multiple events each week. And I always like to tell people, like, that's the widest end of the funnel. They're free. They're available to you. If it is on our website, just go to atlantatechvillage.com, go under events. All of those workshops and opportunities are available for you. And so I would say that's a great way to just get free resources and opportunities. And then from there, you just kind of start to evolve when you're ready to actually kind of headquarter or start to meet and come into the office again. We have mentors and advisors and lots of other opportunities to create community. Uh, you can email us and there's actually a, a form on the website and they're join. And we would love to get, get to know you. Uh, we are created for technology startups. So uh, we support all entrepreneurs, but we are Atlanta Tech Village. And so we're looking for somebody who's creating or even wants to create some kind of proprietary technology. Uh, and the good news is that there's a little bit of everybody there. So we have people who are like, hey, I've got this idea. Maybe I've got my business plan, but I'm so early stage. I'm doing customer discovery. I do not have um, my product market fit. All the way to companies who are a 50-person company who've raised Series A, Series B, even. Uh, so it's a wide variety of people, and I think that that's kind of part of our secret sauce is you can see people who look like you, who are ahead of you in the game, and it's really inspiring to be able to walk down a hall and say, hey, can you help me with this, or I'd love to hear your idea about that. Yeah, it's, it's such a friendly place. Um, everything from fun, uh, you know, great coffee, clean conference rooms, you can run into 
you know, Karen in the parking lot, David Cummings in the elevator, an investor, um, you know, in the, in the restroom. You never know who you're going to meet. <laughs> That's not the place to pitch, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> good, good point. We've got to make this fun. Uh, yeah. But I've enjoyed every single visit there and uh, looking forward to getting back. I mean, one of our core values is to be nice, right? So I say it shows like we're this Atlanta is the city of hospitality. Uh, we don't want to be Silicon Valley, right? There, there's these opportunities that we have to differentiate ourselves as a city and as a community. And one of the ways we strive to do that is that we know how hard it is to be an entrepreneur. There's really high highs, there's really low lows. Like the last thing you need is a building full of people who don't understand who are not supportive in that. So we definitely uh, are quite protective of our culture and uh, it's definitely leading with kindness. So sometimes it feels a little touchy feeling, right? To like say that, like what kind of, I'm like, no, 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 everyone works their ass off here. But what you need to understand is that we want it to be a collaborative environment and, and that's part of the requirement. So. If that doesn't sound good to you, we're just not the place for you. And that's the okay. amount of introductions I've received or made through handshakes and hugs, you know, on, on every floor of the village, I can't even count that. So it's, it's a wonderful, kind place to be. I've never been there. So definitely I would love to be there. So um, how many startups are already there in the ATV as of today, as we speak? Pre-COVID, we had over 300. Uh, COVID-19 has obviously been very hard on entrepreneurs and hard on small businesses. So we have seen a decline in that. Um, and so I haven't done a recent count uh, to be fully transparent. Um, but it's, it's interesting because entrepreneurs kind of thrive in challenges. And so, yes, it's discouraging and hard, but a lot of ways I'm seeing people pivot and come up with these amazing ideas and it's actually kind of spurring them to do new different things and take more risks. So we're also seeing a lot of success come from a really challenging season as well. So we'll be, we'll be back up over that 300 mark uh, pretty soon, I think, especially in the new year. I'm, I'm hopeful for our country. Oh, I, I'm very bullish based on just the startup up Georgia and the number of applications there. So I, I'm, I'm fully confident. I mean, startup Georgia took off. It's been a, that's been really fun. So I don't know when you're ready to talk about that, but that's, that's been really exciting too. I'm sure Karen, we all will, again, it'll pick up because of this pandemic situation. Everyone has this tough time. So I'm sure we'll pick up again. So during this pandemic, are there any ways you are, what is the, what is the pandemic vision during this period? What are your plans? How are you trying to motivate the entrepreneurs and again, make it better? I mean, our goal is to always support them in whatever season they're in. And so we've been very, very proactive at reaching out to them, understanding where they are. Uh, making concessions where required, trying to work with people. Um, we've continued all of our events and mentors and advisors. So we, we have stopped doing almost nothing. And instead we've continued doing everything, but in a slightly different way uh, and have really embraced that challenge. And so I think it's been really exciting. We're like, we're using technology of course, in all sorts of exciting ways, like sending video messages, uh, through video up, which is a really cool uh, software piece that actually Julia and our team uh, founded. And so we, we are sending like our face into these inboxes saying, hey, like, how are you? How can we help you? Reply back, let me know, we just wanna see faces. Um, and of course we've stayed open this whole time. And so part of our goal was to be able to have startups who are essential services uh, be able to access their office and continue to work. So we made um, over $200,000 of investment into our building to make it as COVID friendly as possible. So misting services, cleaning services, social distancing, mask requirements. Uh, and we actually have now created a touchless door system so I can actually, we have a huge building. So it's six stories, 103,000 square feet, right in the northern side of Atlanta called Buckhead. And 
you can actually go from the parking deck all the way into the building, up the floors, and into your office without touching a single door, which I love. So we've kind of created all these opportunities um, to allow people to still utilize our space in, in a really safe way. I actually feel safer there than I do pretty much anywhere other than my home. <laughs> yeah, I was speaking to one of our CEOs who uh, builds uh, software for, for airlines, and he's saying it's safer to get on a plane than to go to the beach. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to do either right now. <laughs> you know, on our end, we don't I, have... I Delta, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, on our end, we've been affected pretty greatly because we don't have an office, but we're highly event-based. So the core of our our product are our CEO-only dinners that we hold about nine times a year, where we have about 50 CEOs, a couple investors, and maybe a guest speaker. So now what we're thinking about is doing smaller dinners in two separate restaurants, maybe across the street. And right now we see a third of our CEOs wanting to come back, a third hesitating, a third that don't want to come back. So we want to make sure we make the right decision. We are also a membership organization. There we haven't felt it as much because we have shown value in the past few years. Uh, and uh, actually we're seeing an uptick uh, in, in membership because relationships are so important right now. Uh, for, unfortunately, we've had to move everything to virtual. I love that ATV is never closed. Many of our CEO offices have not closed. Uh, or shut down, um, but they're slowly opening, even though some might not go fully back till maybe Q1 of next year. Uh, but definitely deals are happening. We started with, in March with uh, Zooms that would just go around the room and saying, how can we help each other with the CEOs? We had CFO only Zooms, CTO only Zooms. Then it pivoted to uh, pandemic topics, and then the CEOs got burned out from pandemic topics, and then we switched to operational and scaling topics. Um, and now we're doing something called deal talk where the CEOs do a round robin. They have one minute to make an ask. The other CEOs have to come help. Uh, so right now, most of it's virtual. Now, some of the CEOs are wanting to get out. Um, actually, we just had a meeting at Brook Run Park where everyone kind of brought their own coffee, brought their own chairs, and we social distance. We had masks in our pocket. If we needed them, we had our own coffee, and we just did a social distance um, um, gathering. So we're starting to creep back out a little bit. I love that. That's like your superpowers building relationships. And I think that that's where our organizations are so similar too, is that we prioritize people over everything else and the, and the value of the power of that. Awesome. So Ashish and Karen, question to you both. So both of your organization, definitely they collaborate. So today or before, do you have any event which collaborates the CEOs and also your startup entrepreneurs. Is there any event such where we have integration? So I know there is overlap in our CEOs. Uh, I know at ATV as well uh, at, at our dinners. I think this might be the first program that we are, we have collaborated and we have become, the CEO council has become a, one of several great partners for the Started Up Georgia program. So this might be the first uh, official collaboration. Awesome. So Ashish, the next question is to you as a mentorship for the ATV. So right now during this pandemic, what are the different types of mentorings are offered to the entrepreneurs existing and also the young entrepreneurs? Do we have any such sessions going on? So they are weekly and uh, Karen's team and a big shout out to Kellyanne uh, who has been uh, uh, amazing at prepping all the maybe 46, 50 mentors. I can't remember how many. So what we'll first do is watch a lessons lab that all the entrepreneurs, I think seven, seven or 800 entrepreneurs watch. So we're at least prepped. We have some prepped questions. And then once a week, uh, the, all the, uh, um, we're grouped into, I think I have 18 uh, um, founders assigned to me. And I think most mentors have, that similar amount and every week we have some questions we answer we go around the room and then they can you know they, they can share ideas together everything from um, a lot of its early stage so most of it is uh, product market fit what's your hypothesis let's go deep on the problem and the solution uh, some are a little uh, further along and they might need uh, strategic uh, they might need a strategic CFO right now actually to help uh, figure out uh, FP&A, financial planning and accounting, um, or they're getting ready to pitch or they want 
I get into investors or it might be their second time uh, being an entrepreneur as you know something common with me where I failed the first time and now they're on their second and they're a little further along and they can actually mentor others in the group so the type of mentorship and, and mentorship is a two-way street so I'm learning from them it doesn't work if it's a one-way street so I feel like I put myself in the position as a mentee many times as well I might not know the industry I might not know the space I might not so I'm learning as much as they're learning. So I always like to say it is a two-way street and it, it is a flat organization. It's not I'm here and they're here. We're all together. So that, that's, that's a Agreed. Agreed, Ashish. Everything is a learning. Every day is a learning day. And definitely it's a two-way. So, you know, the generations changes, the thought changes, and the acceleration also we need to implement, right? There are a lot of technology improvements. There are ideas which are coming from the young generation. Uh, it's really amazing that we need to learn every day. And, and that, even, even though I, someone needs, let's say, an introduction into Delta, instead of just giving it, to them, giving it to them through our network, I first want them to work and try to figure out how they can get it. And they've tried every possible way and they came to a dead end. That's where we'll help. Otherwise, they're not learning anything. So that's the approach I take. Next question to Karen. Karen, what is the, um, how do you, from ATV, how do you take an idea? For example, you have a young entrepreneur with an idea. How can he come to ATV and approach for that idea to evolve into a product? So what sort of help you can provide? Kind of the goal of the Started Up Georgia program. So I would definitely, I mean, we have over 700 uh, entrepreneurs in the Started Up Georgia program. Now, at Atlanta Tech Village, we also do summer startup school, which is over but every summer. We do 10 class kind of boot camp for any aspiring entrepreneurs who would like to join us. Uh, you can find that on our website, atlantatechvillage.com. So we have a summer startup school kind of boot camp for anyone who wants to just get a feel for what it was like. And then Started Up Georgia is like this really deep dive into you know, not just the classes, but these community groups, like Ashish is leading one, and man, Atlanta CEO Council really showed up for us in leadership for a lot of these groups. And I think that's almost where even more value is coming from, and just these leaders and facilitators and everyone being able to come together and find community. So, you know, Ashish mentioned that, but we're doing all the way from like, do I have what it takes to be an entrepreneur, to how do you there's a lot of good ideas out there that will not make you money, right? So how do we help you identify an idea that's based off your skills or connections that will come natural to you? And then how do we make sure it's something that will actually make money? And we take you all the way through um, 12 weeks of that. And at the end, they can apply for seed funding. So we are still taking donations. So if anyone would like to go to start it at georgia.org, uh, and go to the donate button. 100% of those proceeds are being given to entrepreneurs at the end of the program. Perfect. So for Atlanta Tech Village, this program is completely pay it forward initiative. Uh, myself, Kellyanne and Hilton on the Atlanta Tech Village team, and then 56 amazing volunteers that are doing other our community groups and or teaching. Uh, and of course, tons of community uh, partners as well. So we're, it's, it's definitely been a statewide kind of partnership with a lot of really amazing people to make this happen. Karen, I, I had a question. How, how was this idea born that started up Georgia? So David Cummings was on a task force, uh, I believe for the governor, and there was a group of people because right now we, the state of Georgia is struggling with the highest rate of unemployment today. I think we're at 12%. And the idea was how can we facilitate decreasing that unemployment rate as quickly as possible and kind of accelerate that economy. And of course you can do that. We believe uh, entrepreneurship is the single greatest mechanism for changing the world. So it's like, okay, how do we expose more people to entrepreneurship? And, and a huge piece of this program is open for everybody, but the idea was born out of, out of that unemployment rate. And how can we take these unemployed people who may not have other opportunities right now and kind of come alongside them and help, help them take their destiny into their, their own hands and launch a viable business that can not only care for themselves, 
but their family and ideally make other hires and support other families. Uh, so that's the big idea that it came out of this kind of ideological task force. And so I was like, all right, we have an idea. Went from idea to launch seven weeks. <laughs> so it, it went really fast, but the beauty is when we kind of did an all call, amazing folks like Ashish and Atlanta CEO, CEO Council stepped up uh, our attendees and who are participating in the program. And one of the, there was, we tried to make it as frictionless as possible. So there was an application. We did not accept everybody, uh, but it was really just your personal information and then a short, like 250 word essay on why they wanted to be an entrepreneur. So the idea is we were, we were making them work for it a little bit, but there was no wrong answer. And so a lot of that we had, you know, I'm a senior developer at a software, you know, already existing software company all the way to, Hey, I'm a single black mom with three kids, high school education. And I have this amazing idea. So you have kind of these two very different demographics, but then you have everybody coming together with this kind of unified approach of like, we want to write our own future and we want to launch and grow our own business, which has been really an exciting journey to see everyone coming together in that way. Yeah, my, my mentee group you know, is from Marietta to Miami. Um, there's one in Boston that is working full time. There's another in a parallel accelerator uh, that's also in this one. So it's, it's, it is very, very diverse. And that's what makes it so much fun for the entire group. That's awesome. Really, this program, I think it should really excel. So what will happen to them after the 12 weeks of complete program? Uh, do you pick any of the ideas and uh, make, it, uh, um, make it successful at the end of the 12-week uh, program? So at the end of the program, they will be able to apply for seed funding. There will be an application. They'll have to show forward movement and have their mentor or their leader of their community group give a recommendation. So from there, we'll kind of sort who gets that. But we definitely want to know. We will be tracking who created businesses. We'll try to get them as much exposure as we can. Um, and we will try to get them connected. I know this, uh, the startup ecosystem report for Atlanta just came out from startup Atlanta. So we're getting ready to push that out and do whatever we can to make sure that they are plugged into an organization, um, a physical place, uh, anything that they can need. Hopefully Atlanta tech village will, will be giving out a bunch of scholarships as well. Um, so we really want to, we won't just end the program, but we want to help connect them to the next thing. Awesome. Awesome. Coming to the diversity, do we have, uh, for any, uh, integration with the Indian American community so far? I know Ashish is also from the Indian, Indian American, but how, how are they engaged? Do you have full presence in ATV from the Indian community so far? Are you asking about a formal partnership or just our general demographic? It's a general demographic. So just from, from my experience, you know, the several, when I, when I walk in, it, it's a tech hub, right? So there's a natural Asian affinity to <laughs> do that. So you, you can easily feel that presence um, there as well. And then, you know, a lot of our CEOs come from there, CTOs and CF, CFOs come from there. Also, we send, you know, one good example, uh, Karen was, um, uh, I think is IFRA, and, and we introduced the CTO Nandu to, to, to her. And, you know, that was kind of an Asian connection, not, met, not you know, forcefully done, but that's just kind of how, how it fit. Um, so I think it's, it just becomes a natural, uh, natural connection because of uh, the, the, the industry, yeah. just from my experience. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, like we, our goal is to have a diverse community. And I know that that's a word that people throw around a lot, but it's truly something that we have intentionally kind of tried to cultivate with different programming and opportunities. So if we can walk into Atlanta Tech Village and everyone can find somebody who looks like themselves, then I think we will have been successful. Yes. And we want it to be a, a true representation of our city and Atlanta and greater Atlanta is a very diverse place. So we, we want everyone to feel like they have a, a place where they belong at, the village. Yeah, and ATV is, uh, you know, it's ubiquitous. Uh, a lot of the Asian population lives in Alfred, uh, Alfred Johns Creek and so forth. 
And ATV has a presence there through partnerships with um, a lot of the tech hubs up there. So if, it's one of those things in Atlanta, if you're an entrepreneur and you can't get to an investor, there's something wrong, right? And if you haven't heard about ATV, you're not doing the right thing. You're not in the right places. You're not in the right room. That's true. That's true, Ashish. But um, I was, I just wanted uh, to take this opportunity. I wanted to, you know, make this program aware in the Indian community too. So definitely this program helps everyone to understand. And we have uh, three minutes to go. So I wanted to open up for you to tell anything to the viewers um, on the benefits or how they can engage more closely. So um, Karen, do you want to say about uh, Georgia Start, Start It Up? Sure, so Start It Up Georgia, the applications are closed, but it is something that we definitely want everyone to know that the state and our community and our city is coming together and creating this amazing program for everybody. So we do have 709 entrepreneurs in the program, 44 community groups, 56 volunteers, uh, and we definitely want everyone to be able to be a part of that. So if you don't follow Atlanta Tech Village on social media at all, definitely check us out. Our handle's ATL Tech Village. And from there, we're still figuring out the end of the program because we got it up and launched uh, and going really quickly. So we may well do kind of a demo day, night, uh, virtual event for the funds that we're gifting. And of course, the more funds that we have, the more that we can give and the more exciting that kind of virtual live event would be for our entrepreneurs who most 90% of them are first time entrepreneurs. Uh, so that would be a really exciting and great way to get involved. We've had people donate thousands of dollars and we've had people donate $25. Uh, so no, no amount is too big or too small, but that would be a really tangible way. Uh, and anyone who donates, I'm communicating directly with them and we're actually putting a committee so all the donors are actually a part of the group that we will all collectively decide together how and when we would like to give those funds out. So Perfect. it should be a really fun time. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Karen and Ashish. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Bye.